Hi and welcome to C Programming for Arduino, a step-by-step -step guide. Let's write a program which simulates tossing a coin. The circuit diagram is the same as that of alternating blink LED program which we discussed previously. To do this, let's begin the exercise by using the five program steps for our design. Recall that the initialization step is used to establish the environment in which we want the program to run. Because we wish to use our two LEDs from the previous program, we need to initialize the input output pins that control the LEDs. We also know that we need to generate a series of random numbers for use in the program. Where is that going to come from? Anytime you need a value or an object for use in a program, the first thing you should do is determine whether someone else has already created code for that object. The first place to check is the Arduino language reference. Sure enough, it appears that there is a random number generator available. Upon inspection, we see a function named random seed as well as random. Further reading tells us that random produces a series of pseudo random numbers. What is meant by pseudo random numbers? This means that although the distribution of the series of numbers is randomly distributed, you will get the identical values each time you use random. Although this can be great while debugging a program, it is clearly not what we want when we are finished testing the program. Reading the documentation of random seed function, we find out that we can seed the random number generator with a unique value at the outset and function random then generates a unique set of random numbers for that seed value. Therefore, it seems appropriate that we use a random seed function in the initialization step. We also need some working variables to store various values in the program. In this step, we need to gather all of the data necessary to solve the task at hand. The only data that the program uses is the random number produced by the random number generator. Our program needs to inspect the random number value and determine whether it is a heads or a tails. The random number generator produces numeric values, not heads or tails. Also, the type of data that are returned from the random number generator is a long type. Because there is no heads or tails data type, we need to invent our own. Because a coin toss has a binary result, that is, there are only two states possible, heads or tails, we can view the random number as an odd or even result. Any number modulo 2 yields 1 for odd number or yields 0 for even number. So we will treat odd numbers as a heads and even numbers as a tails. In this step we display the output as required. In our case we will light red LED when the number is odd and green LED when the number is even. Note that odd number represents heads and even number represents tails. It would seem therefore that we should turn both LEDs off for a second or so and then turn the appropriate LED on for a few seconds based on the random number that was generated. Then we should repeat the process over and over again. Because we are not doing anything fancy and the program is designed to run forever until the power is removed or something fails, there is no termination step. We will discuss how to force a program to end later in the coming videos. Now let's discuss the code. We begin the program with a series of hash defines and data definitions. Note that the hash defines make the code more readable and simple to understand. As they will use two LEDs of different colors for heads and tails, these must be connected on two digital input output pins. These two hash defines assign pin 13 for heads and pin 12 for tails. Here, pause and reset time are defined. If we want to change the pause between coin tosses, then all we need is to change the hash defined pause and recompile the program again. We do not need to change it everywhere in the code. This is the definition of variables head and tail which are associated with pin 13 and pin 12. Here we have defined a long variable named random number and initialize it to 0. The letter capital L is written with 0 in order to tell the compiler that it's a long data type, not integer. Here we have written a function named generate random number. No parameters are passed into this function. This shows the data type of the values returned to it. 
this is the function body in which we have called the random function. It is a built-in function that generates pseudo random numbers from 0 to 1 million. This returns the pseudo random numbers to the function. Next, we run the setup code. These statements simply establish the input output means and their modes for use in the program. The last function call seeds the random number generator using the value returned by a call to analog rate as the seed value. Basically, the function reads the voltage on pin 0 and maps it to the value between 0 and 1023. Whatever that value is, it is used to seed the random number generator. Having done that, we are ready for the input and process steps as presented in the loop function. In loop, we will call the function random number generator which will generate the number and its value will be assigned to the variable random number. Then the function digital write is called to turn off both LEDs for a specific time. Now it's time to make decisions. We will take the modulo 2 of randomly generated numbers. And if it is odd, then pin representing heads will be turned on, else pin representing tails will be turned on. Whichever pin is turned on, its status will remain high for 3 seconds using delay pause. After compiling and uploading the code in the microcontroller, this is how the program works. Red LED represents heads and green LED represents tails. You can see that the results of tosses are random. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.